Horizon stage powered by Mastercard. So, I hope you're enjoying the final day of the show. It's time for our third session of the day. The world of financial services remains dependent on legacy infrastructure and architecture, so perhaps it's time to rethink our approach to databases. In this session, we'll hear about Tiger Beetle Financial Transactions Database, and we'll be seeing a demo from a presenter who's built a large online audience. When I say large, it's in the tens of thousands by talking about them on YouTube. So please welcome Joran Grief, founder and CEO of Tiger Beetle. Thank you, Nadia. A pleasure to be with you all today in Amsterdam uh, to talk about the future. Uh, the future of transaction processing, the next 30 years of how we're going to process the transactions of everyday life. Every buy or sell, every profit or loss, every paycheck or bonus from the boss, every app we install, every swipe or tap in the mall, every message we send or the money we spend, these are all transactions. Uh, whether you loan or whether you lend, transactions. Whether you build or buy, transactions. Every call you take, every move you make, every ticket for the train or a seat on the plane, even the tax return you complete, having saved every cash receipt, uh, someone somewhere is sending something to someone somewhere else, uh, and money is changing hands. What happens when money changes hands? Transactions. Uh, so I want to talk about the future, uh, the future of uh, transaction processing and specifically the infrastructure we'll depend on to do that. The databases that we'll need to record how much Andile paid Bongile and when and for what. In other words, the who, what, when, where, why and how much of every transaction everywhere all the time and how the world will process this information and store it in the transaction processing databases of the future. Of course, the hard part about the future is it hasn't happened yet. Uh, you have to predict it. Uh, but if you're running a bank and you're processing transactions or you've founded a fintech startup and you're processing transactions, you have to understand where these things are going. As Nassim Nicholas Taleb once said, prediction, not narration, is the real test of our understanding. So how can we predict the future? Uh, to see what our transaction databases will at least look like, the minimum requirements. So Alan Kay, the jazz guitarist, computer scientist, and inventor of the Windows interface, he said that the best way to predict the future is to invent it, which begs the question, uh, how do we invent the future? You know, to which that greater inventor, Thomas Edison, would reply, find out what the world needs. And here when we look around uh, at what the world needs, uh, we discover that the world is becoming more transactional. For example, our energy sources are changing from coal to clean energy. And as you move to solar, uh, you see that the sun rises and sets and the price of energy is now starting to change. Uh, it's cheaper when the sun is hot and maybe more expensive at night. So if your smart meter can transact energy every half hour uh, instead of once a month, uh, it's literally valuable. You can actually start to arbitrage solar prices, uh, but to do that, your infrastructure needs to handle a thousand times more load as you switch from monthly billing to half hourly billing. You see the same increase in the cloud where our computing is changing as we move from dedicated servers um, and monthly billing to serverless and per second billing. You used to buy a server, uh, then you rent a server by the month and by the, bin, by the minute and now it's by the second. Uh, so we've looked at energy and computing. Uh, if we turn to FinTech, uh, one of the most surprising things for me uh, is not that the number of FinTech startups doubled in the last five years. So they did from 12,000 startups to 29,000 fintech startups. But the most surprising thing for me is that according to Price Waterhouse, 
the driving force behind this doubling was in fact the growth in transactions around the world. And when we zoom in on this and look to India, we see that the world is only going to get more transactional. For example, seven years ago, India's instant payment system, UPI, processed 4 million transactions a month in 2017. Two years later, and that number had not doubled, it had not quadrupled, it had not 10 x uh, it was up more than 100 x in a two-year period from 4 million to 600 million transactions a month in 2019. I almost don't want to tell you what India is doing today uh, because having 100 x in two years, India then 100 x again, uh, going from 600 million transactions a month to 12 billion transactions a month, uh, with these volumes expected to triple again. So that's not a typo. Uh, that's some serious transaction processing going on. The problem is that there's almost no infrastructure, uh, no transaction database in the world that can handle a 10,000 X increase in load like that. You know, so even if we ignore an autonomous future, a future of AI and autonomous AI agents, multiplying all these human transactions, even if we ignore a future of AI. Uh, the point I want to make is that when you look around at what the world needs, even today, then the volume of transactions across several sectors has increased a hundred to a thousand times, even 10,000 times in the last seven years alone. And yet, the three most popular transactions databases, Postgres, MySQL, SQLite, they are 20 to 30 years old, designed for a different world. There's a saying at Google, for every 10x increase in volume, you need a new design. And yet some of the newer cloud databases, even, they were designed more than 10 years ago, around 2012, uh, before the world became so much more transactional. The other problem is that all these databases, uh, they're used for transaction processing, yes, except they're really general purpose databases. They're jack of all trade. They don't process financial transactions out of the box. For example, uh, the database language of SQL is what they speak when you talk to them, general purpose language. It's a great database language, SQL. You can do anything with it, including processing transactions, financial transactions. But SQL at heart is a query language. It's designed primarily to get data out of your database uh, for analytics. It's not if you're using BigQuery, for example. Uh, it's not the best way to get data into a database. And that's what transaction processing is all about. So there's also tricky engineering work that your engineers will need to do um, around SQL. Thousands of lines of code they're going to have to write and get right if you don't want to lose people's money. So if you're a FinTech, you want to get up and running fast, no such luck. Uh, so you can't get up and running fast with a general purpose database. And then when you do get up and running, you find that you can only run so fast. Uh, because as your business grows, uh, your, your transactions grow, and your database typically starts to hit the wall at around 1,000, maybe 10,000 transactions a second. Uh, but if you want to keep up, if you want to go beyond a thousand transactions a second, then existing infrastructure starts to become expensive. Uh, it's no longer cost effective. Uh, for example, if you're a digital bank, you might find that 80% of your cloud bill is going to be your transactions database uh, because your engineers will have to push it past the limits it was designed um, to do. So these optimizations are not only going to distract your engineers from building product, um, they're also going to make your infrastructure complex and more expensive. So it takes time and error to get the system up and running before you find out that it doesn't run very fast or costs a fortune. And then one day it all goes down. So the lights go out, uh, the database fails, and there's no automated mechanism to restore operations. So the problem is that these older databases, uh, they often run only on a single machine. So they don't have what is called in computer science a consensus protocol, uh, which would enable them to run across multiple machines, even multiple data centers. They don't have that. Uh, so they're not highly available 24-7. They're also not highly reliable. 
They're pretty reliable, according to today's standards, uh, but they're not as reliable as they could be. Uh, they're not fault tolerant to hardware failure. For example, most databases, they write transactions to disk to keep them durable. But they assume that the disk never fails. This is the model of, of, uh, of research around the time 20, 30 years ago, disks are perfect. However, in the last 10 or 20 years, since these databases were designed, there's been research into how disks fail and how this actually breaks databases badly. Of course, when a database that's processing financial transactions is destroyed, it's like losing a bank vault with people's money inside. But even if you're a database vendor and you know these things, you know these findings, uh, the research is foundational. It's not easy to retrofit onto old designs. You have to redesign the whole system from scratch. Uh, so popular databases are 20 to 30 years old. They're general purpose. They're not built for purpose. They take time to get up and running. Um, and then they don't run fast enough or they're expensive. So it's a perfect storm. Uh, in the last seven years, the world became more transactional and the research around how to maximize availability, how to maximize reliability uh, to get the most out of your hardware, this research only came out in the last six years, well after almost every database was designed. Um, so these systems missed both boats. Uh, it's like the story of the car manufacturer. Uh, they got excited, they invested in a new combustion engine, uh, only to discover that the world had gone electric. So how can we invent the future uh, to predict it, uh, given what the world needs? Uh, there's a need, I think, and it's prediction number one, for databases of the future to be well researched. Uh, existing systems are tried and tested. Uh, the irony is that actually we know exactly how they fail and how badly. Uh, it's, it's in the literature, and we know where new designs could do much better. So we've had decades of research that can go into, new, into future designs. Second prediction, uh, systems of the future are going to be transaction databases. Uh, they're going to specialize for that. They're not going to be general purpose. They're going to specialize. They're going to speak debit credit, not COBOL. Uh, you don't want your engineers to have to spend time on reinventing double entry accounting. Uh, you know, you, you want these systems to speak debit credit out of the box. Uh, so you want to be able to get in and drive, and you want to get to market, and you want to drive these systems a thousand times faster. They've got to be faster cars, uh, because the world is becoming that much more transactional. In other words, prediction number three uh, is that we can expect to move from designs targeting a thousand transactions a second. If your engineers are, are trying to get to 4,000, you should be asking them, very well, how are we going to get to 100,000 transactions a second? How are we going to get to a million? That This requires you know, a radical rethink of infrastructure. Uh, how are our systems going to adapt to deliver this kind of performance? I think the answer again uh, will be specialization. So don't think Volkswagen, think Formula One, lean, mean, machine, pure performance. Uh, if you have Formula One performance like this, uh, prediction number four, is that you can trade this performance for cost efficiency. Uh, replace 200 machines with six in your cloud provider, simplify your infrastructure, go after blue ocean markets you could never serve before. Humans are pretty good at swimming, uh, but dolphins are specialized. They make it look effortless, fun. And this is the beauty of specialization. Hard things become easy. So if your system is that much faster, that much cheaper, you can do things that before felt impossible. For example, uh, regulators have long recognized systemic risks, banks running only on a single cloud provider. Uh, if all the banks in the country run on a single cloud provider, that provider goes down, it could halt the economy. Uh, so you know if you want to hedge against this kind of risk, that your entire cloud account might be accidentally deleted by your cloud provider, uh, you have two options. Uh, you either walk into Lloyd's and ask if you can buy some Megacat insurance, or you start running your transaction processing across multiple cloud providers. But today that's not always easy uh, because the performance isn't always there. So this is prediction number five. Uh, what if transaction performance was so excessively good that you run multi-cloud all the time by default 24-7 without thinking? Uh, to make the cloud providers the commodity they were supposed to be. 
Uh, our penultimate prediction then, number six, is that transaction systems of the future, because they're going to process more volume, they're going to be mission critical. Uh, so the safety standards used in designing these systems are going to need to be space grade, literally, uh, designed to much tighter tolerances, uh, to be not only a thousand times faster, but ten times safer. Perhaps these predictions, in the light of these needs, seem obvious. Nobody wanted slower, buggier transaction processing, futures getting faster, better, safer. How can we bring this future forward? Uh, I love this quote by William Gibson, who said that, in fact, the future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed. So people are already thinking about these things. At least this was our experience uh, consulting on a central bank switch by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Uh, in 2020. So we saw these needs and these problems. And then we asked ourselves the question, how can we stand on the shoulders of giants? How can we take some of the great research from MIT, Wisconsin, Madison, even from the high frequency trading world just of the last few years? How can we blend this into a new design for the future? So we went and did this uh, to invent the future at least as we saw it and developed a financial transactions database called Tiger Beetle, one of the fastest creatures on Earth. We redesigned the whole database from the ground up to rewrite every line of code. Uh, we found that if you streamline and specialize, uh, then you can optimize. You can break past this 1,000 transactions a second barrier, the speed barrier you can start to do from 100,000 transactions a second, even up to a million transactions a second. And you can trade this performance for cost efficiency. For example, we stood up a Tiger Beetle cluster, we sent in 100 billion transactions, took 10 days, and the hardware cost $300. It was easy. Uh, and again, it's about making the hard things look easy. So to reset transaction processing for the next 30 years, you just want a much, much faster car. Uh, and if you can have this kind of performance, then things like running multi-cloud uh, you know, they move from the category of disaster recovery where they are now, they move to just becoming routine, your everyday expectations. It should be to your engineers, why aren't we running multi-cloud all the time? Uh, you know, that's, it's better to get ahead of the disaster than to recover from it. So above all, we focused on fault tolerance like this. We took NASA's power of 10 rules for safety critical code, the safety methodology in engineering, uh, and this gives the operator that the system is either running correctly with thousands of, of safety checks all the time, or it shuts down safely. Uh, and then we made the backups not only real-time, but self-testing. How often have you heard the story, oh, we had the backups, but we didn't test them. So we thought, wouldn't it be nice if the database itself tests the backups in real-time across cloud providers, and then automatically repairs them. On top of this, we adopted a new testing technique uh, that could run Tiger Beetle in the equivalent of a flight simulator uh, to simulate millions of rare failure scenarios, even billions, 24-7, and test that they are all handled correctly. Finally, ultimate prediction uh, of where the future of transaction processing is going, prediction number seven, is that it's going to be open source, uh, as we've done with Tiger Beetle. So this kind of technology is simply too valuable not to be open source. It needs to, to power the whole ecosystem, that the ecosystem can invest in this as open source, uh, especially if it's going to power the next 30 years of transaction processing. Thank you for predicting it with me. Let's cheers to that future. Any questions? We've got about a minute, or I'll be here afterwards.